Today I have the newly designed Centweek keyboard tray system for digital art pen displays. I'll go through how to set it up and how to properly use this to increase your digital art workflow. The Centweek comes in two options, the S-Uni for standard size keyboards or the X-Uni for full size keyboards, for example with the number tray. The X-Uni is 13 inches wide, while the S-Uni is 10 inches. The length is about 3 and 7 8 inches to give you a rough idea of what kind of keyboard you can support. Whichever option you choose, it comes with everything you're going to need to connect this to your pen display, including enough Velcro pads for multiple tablet installations and a pair of lockdown assembly screws. The big change from the previous model is that the tray mount is now made out of ABS injection molded material versus acrylic. This means the mounting tray is more pliable, allowing you to remove the keyboard once in a while without risking cracking the tray mount. The side view shows the extendable arms, which are used to attach to your display. On the back, there's a generous rear bumper to prevent any scratching or damage to the display once you mount it. Each arm also has an additional protective bumper, as well as the Velcro strip you use to attach to the display. The cup looking things attached to the arms are actually pen holders. It's designed to hold a multitude of different pen sizes and has a protective bumper inside of it for the pen nibs. It also doubles to hold wires, for example if you were mounting a wired keyboard. Last, these holes are where you'll put the thumb screw assembly through. As we prepare for installation, you're going to have to make a decision between the small pads or the larger pads that are going to attach to your keyboard. The difference being, if you don't plan to remove the keyboard, you use the larger pads. If you plan to remove the keyboard on a regular basis, you use the smaller circular ones. I'll be using a Logitech MX Mini as my keyboard of choice. And the first thing I'm going to do is line it up somewhat with the Centweek and add six of the circle Velcro pads in a somewhat symmetrical fashion. Next, I'm going to prepare those thumb screws by removing a protective cap and unscrewing the top end. Now on first go, we're going to install the Centweek right in the middle of the Cintiq. With those back arms fully extended, I'm just going to slowly slide it and use that rear bumper to get it into position. Take note of the gap I have between the bottom of the Centweek and the active area of the display. You really want the bottom of the Centweek to meet where the active area of the display ends. You can adjust this by slowly unscrewing the four screws and simply sliding the tray mount down. Now this is a larger pen display. But as a general rule, you need about 1.5 centimeters or a half an inch distance from the top of the edge of the pen display to the active area. Moving to the back of the display, we're going to finalize exactly where we want to mount this. To do that, you want to put the arms in position and then use the included arrow stickers to meet where the bend starts to meet the end of the arm or about where it would be flush with the pad you're going to be using. Don't let perfection be the enemy of the good here. As long as you generally know where you're going to put the pad, it should work out okay. So we'll pull the arm up and we're going to slowly attach the square pad. As opposed to choosing the options before, anytime you're actually going to be using the pads to attach the Cintweak to the display, you're going to use the big square ones. After slowly attaching that, apply a little pressure to make sure it doesn't come up when you pull the arm up. Now I'm going to put that arm down to anchor it while I move to the left side on the next one. The process is exactly the same up until the point where you lower that second arm, you're going to want to make sure everything's nice and tight in here and the rear bumper is flush against the front of the display. You can check the bumpers under the arms as well because at this point, we're ready to tighten it. Take one of the thumb screw assemblies from earlier and start to thread it through the hole. Note, if you notice, each arm has two grooves, one on each end of it, where that screw is going to rest. Once it's through, screw the other end on while slowly pivoting to rest into those grooves. Don't over tighten it just yet until we get the other one in. I'm just going to check the stability here a little bit and another world class install job by yours truly. Now the Centweek can obviously be mounted in any position, middle, left or right. I wanted to show in this particular configuration that although I'd have the back cover off, the Centweek is flexible enough even if you have the arms in different positions. So scrolling through here to get you an idea where the pads would go, this is about where you need to be on the Pro 24. I like to keep my back cover off because I like to get to the wires and the USB ports that are there behind the Centweek. You could also argue that it might keep the device cooler which is maybe why I don't have any problem with fan noise. Either way, make sure you don't over tighten those thumb screws until you get it in a secure position. Last, slip on those protective caps, and as you can see, I'm good to go. Some tweak and keyboard are mounted, and I'm ready to work. Slight disclaimer, I'm sitting back further than I normally would be, so I'm not in the way of the camera. Moving on to the X-Uni now, we'll use a wired keyboard, and the setup is exactly the same. 
As a reminder, the small circular pads is if you're going to remove the keyboard. If you're just going to keep it mounted, use the square ones. Now when you're lining it up, the bottom of your keyboard should line up with where the active area of your pen display starts. The keyboard I'm using is not perfectly straight, but it'll work for demonstration purposes. Once I have the keyboard attached, you'll notice I utilize the pen cup holder to tuck my wires away. That's pretty convenient so they're not flying all over the place. Now I have to apologize for my friend who lent me this keyboard without an express key. He's fired. Let's go over a build with a smaller pen display, specifically a 15.6 inch. You'll need a laptop stand, such as this one. If you're curious to see specifically what I'm using in my builds, the links are down below. We'll be using the XP Pen Artist 16, and we'll begin by slowly mounting this and tweak to the pen display and tightening the screws just a bit. This is really just a placement phase at this point. From the rear of the display, I've placed the square pads on the back of the actual laptop stand itself. I'll pop the thumb screws in here and just give it a little shake to see if it's stable. The next step is adjusting the tray mount. Once again, the bottom of your tray and keyboard should align with the top part of the active area of your display. Last, I'll mount my keyboard. And if you notice, I've unintentionally placed it a little lower than where it should be. That's because I can't see it. Since I use the circle Velcro pads, that's easy to adjust. If you plan to be more stationary, you can use a laptop stand like this. I call this the tank build, because as long as you secure the pen display with those Velcro pads to the stand, it's not going anywhere. This works great if you don't have a lot of desk space, or you're in a dorm room, or you're just a minimalist, and you don't like a lot of crap laying around. Huh? Oh, right, uh, the side hack. I was just about to get to that. Now what in the name of Pepperoni Hot Pockets is that XUni doing mounted on the side of the Cintiq? Well, I'm gonna show you. This is the side hack, and will work with either one of the Cintiqs. In this example, I have a PowerMate, an Express Key Remote, and a Tor Box all attached to this XUni. So I have control of my volume, my Express Key Remote, and any video editing I might use, all in one shot. In this example, I have a Kindle Fire, which is set up using StreamBot or Touch Portal for when I'm streaming. I've got the Tor Box there to edit all my video software and allow my shortcut keys to Clip Studio or whatever drawing software I'm using. Finally, I have the mix of them. You can see how strong that Velcro is because it's holding that Kindle Fire when I aligned it more to the edge of that XUni. Got my volume control there, and finally the tour box down below. So how did I accomplish this exquisite piece of sorcery? Well, it just so happens that those pen holders are removable, and I'm going to quickly take you through it. You start by completely removing the tray mount, taking those screws out all the way. You want to flip it around as those screws are about to come out, so all the pieces don't fall all over the place. Once you detach those screws, it's easy just to lift it off. Now the pen holder, the arm, and as well as the piece you're going to need to reattach it are all part of the same assembly. You'll need this piece right here, whatever it's called, to remount the arms without the pen holder to the Cintuit. Detach the arm and put it to the side and make sure you don't lose the nib protector that's inside the cup. Now grab that doohickey and one of the screws and start threading it through the back into the doohickey. You can then do the same with the bottom screw but leave yourself a lot of space. Straighten everything out, grab the arm, and the arm is going to slide in. You'll have to remove that bottom screw though, because the openings are on the opposite side of the arm. Once the top screw is slid in, you can then thread the bottom screw through the arm and into the doohickey to tighten up. When complete, it should look something like this. The most important thing is that the top of the arm is flush with the top of the Cintuic. It may take a little adjusting to get it just right. In terms of attaching it to the actual pen display itself, you'll notice I left the pen holders on for this one. Again, removing the pen holders is optional for the side hack. I have the VESA mount attachment on my Cintiq, so one of the Velcro pads is going to go directly underneath it. The other, I placed within one of the legs, so they're somewhat symmetrical. It's time to attach those screws and tighten everything up. When it's all mounted, it should look something like this. And now you've got an either 10 or 13 inch long area, depending on which Cintuic you went with, to mount any devices you need for your digital art workflow. Other devices you could use for the side hack include things like a loop deck, a stream deck, any of the game controllers that people use now, whether it's the G13 or the one from Razer. Basically, your options are unlimited as long as you can get Velcro on it. What? Yes. No, wait, first of all, my channel. Second of all, the Pro 27 with the tray on the side blocked the express keys that were in back of the Cintiq, hence you couldn't get to them. On the Pro 24, there are no express keys in the back. 
meaning it doesn't obscure the keys or the ability to get to them. I'm working on a video on best setups for iPad digital artists, and while that's not complete, plus, you know, clicks, I wanted to tease it because I did get this in tweak to mount to my Sketchboard Pro. That'll be linked down below when it's finished. Spoiler alert though, it works pretty good. Let's stick the landing on this one. In use, this works exactly as I hope. That's to say, besides the keyboard mounting, I had a bunch of unique scenarios to try to make my workspace as perfect as possible. In fact, I shot over three hours of footage for this video and I found the support staff for Centweak really easy to work with. And in fact, I was surprised they didn't say at some point, dude, what exactly you're trying to do with this thing? But instead, the designer was as eager to see what you can do with this thing as I was. You can make the argument that I tried to do everything I could to break it, but no matter what I threw at it, I was able to get it to go. I'll drop the website if you want to purchase one yourself down in the description. This easily gets a thumbs up from me. It's well made and the people behind it put a ton of effort in, not only into the user experience, but how it was built. Those are the kind of companies I like to support. Hey, hopefully this helped you out. If you think this video was good, what do you check out this one over here? I'll see you guys in the next one.